While you're watching this video, pieces of continents are slowly breaking off from below and are pulled down into the oceanic mantle, a hot, mostly solid layer that moves slowly under the seafloor. As soon as these fragments reach the mantle, they can trigger volcanic eruptions in parts of the ocean where there are no volcanoes. Plus, when continents break apart, it happens not only at the surface, but also deep down. But more on that later. This process can continue for tens of millions of years. The new study shows that Earth's insides are even more dynamic than we thought. It also explains why many volcanic islands, including Christmas Island in the Northeast Indian Ocean, contain unusually high levels of certain chemical elements. The thing is, these elements are normally only found in continental crust. Well, scientists did suspect that these elements showed up because some powerful forces deep inside the Earth took old, recycled pieces of rock and mixed them into the mantle. This process works a bit like when you mix together ingredients for cake batter. But before, researchers believed those elements came from two main sources – sediment that sank into the mantle as oceanic plates got pushed down, or from mantle plumes. Those are columns of hot rock rising up from deep inside Earth. However, these explanations don't fit all observations. In some volcanic areas, there's almost no sign that the crust has been recycled. In other places, the mantle seems to cool and too close to the surface to be affected by the rising hot rock. Scientists used to wonder how this could happen. Now we know that some of the material in those regions comes from pieces of continents that sink deep into the mantle, and these pieces affect the volcanoes that form above. The new study also suggests a curious idea. Continents don't just break apart at the surface, they peel away from below too. And this can happen over much greater distances than scientists thought before. Researchers used simulations to figure out how continents and the mantle behaved when stretched by tectonic forces. Their work is built on earlier research showing that when continents split, deep, powerful forces inside our planet create a mantle wave. This wave moves along the base of the continent at depths of about 90 to 125 miles. The wave moves extremely slowly, about a millionth of the speed of a snail, and gradually strips material from the roots of the continents. These peeled off fragments are then carried sideways, sometimes more than 620 miles, into the oceanic mantle. Once there, they can trigger volcanic eruptions in the ocean for tens of millions of years. The research also shows that the mantle continues to feel effects of continental breakup long after the continents themselves have separated. Even after a new ocean basin forms, the mantle keeps moving, reorganizing and transporting enriched material far from where it originally came. To make this conclusion, researchers studied geochemical data from different parts of the Earth, including the Indian Ocean Seamount province. That's a chain of volcanic formations that appeared after the supercontinent Gondwana had broken apart over 100 million years ago. Their computer models and chemical tests showed that right after the supercontinent Gondwana broke apart, a lot of magma with unusual chemicals pushed up to the surface. Over millions of years, this chemical signature slowly faded as less material came up from under the continent. The most unexpected discovery is that this happened without any help from those deep, hot columns of rock scientists used to think were needed. Now, to get an even clearer picture, let's sneak a peek into our planet's insides. Earth is about 4.6 billion years old. It was born from a huge cloud of dust and gas that slowly cooled, shrank, and hardened into the planet we know today. As it cooled, heavy metals like iron and nickel sank to the center, and lighter, rocky materials floated upward. This created the Earth's layered structure, with each layer having its own unique properties. The crust is like Earth's skin. It's our planet's outermost layer made of solid rock. It's broken into huge pieces called tectonic plates that slowly drift over time. There are two kinds of crust, 
oceanic crust, and continental crust. The oceanic crust is about four to six miles thick. It's covered with a thin layer of sediments like sand, clay, and shells. Below that are dense rocks like basalt, rich in magnesium. As for the continental crust, it's thicker than oceanic crust and is located under continents. It's made of lighter rocks than oceanic crust. Beneath the crust is the mantle. It makes up more than 75% of Earth's volume. The top of the mantle is pretty rigid, but deeper down, it becomes soft and partially molten, which allows it to flow slowly. This flow is what moves the tectonic plates. At the center of the Earth lies the core. It's made mostly of iron and nickel and has two distinct layers, the outer core and the inner core. The outer core is a liquid layer of iron and nickel. It's insanely hot, up to 10,800 degrees Fahrenheit, as hot as the surface of the sun. The outer core also generates Earth's magnetic field, which protects us from harmful solar radiation. The inner core is solid because of the crushing pressure inside the planet. It's also made of iron and nickel. Now, the Earth's outer shell, called the lithosphere, is made up of the crust and the uppermost part of the mantle. It's broken into large pieces, called tectonic plates. There are a few super large plates and many smaller ones. Six of the major plates are named after the continents they carry, like the North American, African, and Antarctic plates. But even those smaller plates play an important role. For example, the tiny Juan de Fuca plate is responsible for many of the volcanoes in the Pacific Northwest of the United States. The plates are moving like a jumble of old conveyor belts. They move very slowly, about one to two inches per year. But over millions of years, this movement shapes the face of our planet. Most earthquakes, volcanoes, and mountain building happen where plates meet, pull apart, or slide past each other. There are three main types of plate boundaries. Convergent, when plates move toward each other. Divergent, when plates move apart. And transform, that's when plates slide sideways past each other. When tectonic plates collide, the crust crumples and buckles, forming mountain ranges. About 55 million years ago, India crashed into Asia, slowly creating the Himalayas, the tallest mountains on Earth. The collision continues today, so the mountains are still rising. Mount Everest, the highest point on Earth, may even grow a tiny bit taller over time. At some convergent boundaries, an oceanic plate dives under a land plate in a process called subduction. The land above lifts up, forming mountains, and the sinking plate melts and triggers volcanic eruptions. This is how some mountains in the Andes of South America were formed. When two oceanic plates collide, one usually slides beneath the other, creating deep ocean trenches, like the Mariana Trench in the North Pacific, the deepest point on Earth. These collisions can also form underwater volcanoes that eventually rise above the ocean and turn into island chains, such as Japan. At divergent boundaries, tectonic plates move away from each other, in the oceans, magma from deep in the mantle rises to fill the gap. This creates underwater mountains and volcanoes along the sea. This process renews the ocean floor and slowly widens the ocean basins. By the way, a single mid-ocean ridge system connects all the world's oceans, making it the longest mountain range on Earth. On land, when plates pull apart, they form giant valleys, such as the Great Rift Valley in Africa. If this stretching continues over millions of years, East Africa could split off to become a new landmass. One famous example of transform boundaries is the San Andreas Fault in California. Unlike convergent or divergent boundaries, transform boundaries usually don't create mountains or oceans, but the grinding motion can cause powerful earthquakes, such as the 1906 earthquake that destroyed much of San Francisco. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.